So today's video is going to be three-pronged. I'm going to start by talking about Battlefield 2042, then some news related to Konami, and then conclude with something wholesome surrounding Gabe Newell and the Steam Deck. So Battlefield 2042, its disastrous launches, no secret, and its consistent diminishing of its player base is also something that's been prominently highlighted by myself and many new salads. And the situation is rapidly getting worse and worse, and Battlefield continues to break its own records on that front in all the worst ways. So looking at Steam charts right now, you will see that the player base has now reached an all-time new low with a 24-hour peak that's getting dangerously close to dipping below 2,000 with the 24-hour peak currently being at 2,074 players. Now, I've mentioned before how Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1, older Battlefield games are trumping the latest 2042 in daily player numbers, with Battlefield 1 looking at a 24-hour peak of 7,616, and Battlefield 5 is far higher at a 21,601 24-hour peak. And keep in mind, we're talking about games that released back in 2018 for Battlefield 5 and 2016 for Battlefield 1. Now, here's the crazy part. Battlefield 4 is now also seeing more players than Battlefield 2042, a game that came out in 2013. We're talking about almost a decade ago this game came out, and it's doing better numbers than Battlefield 2042. That's just how badly the game launched. So looking at Battlefield 2042, again, the 24-hour peak number is sitting at 2,074. And then if we look at Battlefield 4, the number is sitting at significantly higher, 2,218. This this feels unprecedented for a popular franchise like this to see its latest release just a couple months after launch, see so many players hemorrhaged from it that it's seeing lower numbers than a decade old title. And this is something that the Reddit community are already talking about with a post from a day ago already having over 4,000 upvotes. 2042 has now less players than Battlefield 4, a game that came out nine years ago. And for a lot of people, they're like, yeah, this makes sense to me. Battlefield 4, you know, that I remember having sort of technical issues at launch, but the formula was there. The core mechanics and the identity of Battlefield and uh, the content and, you know, many aspects of it were handled well, especially after the technical issues were resolved, the game really took off and it became one of people's favorite uh, Battlefield entries of all time. As it should, it was so easy for DICE to nail it down uh, to the best formula. Battlefield 3, 4's core gameplay and setting, Battlefield 1's atmosphere, Battlefield 5's movement, yet they somehow still messed it up. Basically, they all they had to do was take all of their learnings from past entries and shove them all together in 2042 and make the ultimate Battlefield game, but they strayed way off that path, and they didn't ship a complete and polished product. And embarrassingly, even today, over three months after launch, people continue to highlight issues that they're seeing in the game, like right here, how this player is shooting at this guy right there directly, and still nothing. No bullet registration, no hit registration. This has been a prominent issue since the game launched, really. Just the fact that shooting itself works inconsistently, which obviously is a major problem for a first-person shooter. Moving on, we've got another clip right here showing a bug that sees the player being able to jump out of this uh, vehicle and essentially get behind enemy lines in a way that obviously wasn't meant to be. We'll see that in a sec right here. Boom, just like that, launching himself across the map, getting behind enemy lines, and then going on a killing spree, essentially. You can see right here. Nobody's the wiser because, well, this is obviously not supposed to happen. Next up, we got a clip of someone showing how takedowns are still broken, how after the animation plays, instead of killing the player, still have to shoot them with bullets, which is not how takedowns should work. So yeah, this absolutely makes no sense. And for good measure, here's one last one showing what seems to be either a player cheating or just some kind of invincibility bug where you can see right here the player shooting at an enemy and you can see blood spraying and everything, but they're not dying. So either they're cheating or the game is broken enough that 
a bug like this can happen, which wouldn't surprise me in the least bit. And beyond what the community is saying, major outlets like the Washington Post has released articles like this. Three months later, Battlefield 2042 is paying the price for a very bad decision, highlighting how, you know, this editor has tried going back to the game, but are still seeing a number of major issues like loadout selection screen turning invisible. My loadouts reverted to their defaults with none of the attachments I'd selected. Players would freeze mid-stride as though they'd been turned into a statue. The missile lock reticle for the anti-air launcher still bugs out and disappears. There was also a very foundational issue that the game just wasn't that fun to play. Three months later, that remains true. I don't think I've ever felt more alone playing a multiplayer game, especially due to a lack of voice chat. It's rare that any of my squad mates respond to a request made using the ping wheel. Even what tools there are to communicate, you know, a lot of people just don't tend to work as a team because the game design doesn't really enable or encourage that. The text chat inevitably and predictably devolves into something that is unproductive, excessive wait times to fill the servers. With how few players continue to engage with Battlefield 2042, matchmaking in general has just been a major issue. It's been impossible to fill these large servers from 64 to 128 players with enough players to make it a full-fledged experience that isn't filled with bots. Impossible to meet and connect with consistent groups of squad mates in Battlefield 2042. There's no easy way to talk to them. Again, highlighting the issue of a game encouraging team play, not having voice chat and the game in general. It's designed just not encouraging teamwork, general player apathy, and playing Battlefield 2042 right now is not a communal experience. So yeah, the Battlefield 2042 situation isn't looking any better, and no matter what EA might say about their commitment towards this long long-term life service, I just can't believe for a second that this game has any chance of surviving. As far as I'm concerned, the writing's already on the wall with this one. It was dead from the get-go, and uh, nothing short of a miracle, I think, will bring it back from the brink. So that's Battlefield. Let's now talk about Konami and the recent troll job from some either community member or disgruntled fan, whoever they might be. It concerns the Silent Hill domain, silenthill.com. This is a domain that's been available on numerous occasions because Konami forgot to renew it. So back in 2019, the domain was available for almost $10,000. I think Konami did eventually manage to get it back, but recently they failed to renew the domain. Somebody was able to snatch it up, which has led to headlines like this. Konami let the silenthill.com domain expire and some joker bought it. And someone bought silenthill.com seemingly to troll Konami. And this this is based off of the fact that if you go to uh, silenthill.com right now, what you will see is just an image of this tweet from Masahiro Ito. I wish I hadn't designed effing Pyramid Head. And this is a real tweet, by the way, I can show you right here. I wish I hadn't designed effing Pyramid Head. Over 100,000 likes. And this is a tweet from uh, not too long ago, actually, February 20th, 2022. Something he expressed because Pyramid Head has become so iconic that it feels like, you know, every Silent Hill has got to have one. It almost feels like a mandate to have Pyramid Head featured in the Silent Hill entry when he just wanted to be a one-off enemy and not have the enemy cheapened by it becoming this thing that has to be a recurring element of Silent Hill. It's more to do with that, but either way, for some reason, the troll decided to take this tweet and apply it to SilentHill.com after Konami forgot to renew. Then again, Konami has never been a company to do much with domain names. Like, if you type in MetalGear.com or MetalGearSolid.com, nothing shows up. Instead, what Konami has is their own portal website on Konami.com. But still, if you were smart, you would buy domains directly related to your franchises and have those linked to your portals. Like if you type God of War.com, for example, that'll take you to the PlayStation portal of God of War. Apparently, Konami can't be bothered to do that with SilentHill.com or MetalGear.com or any of the dot coms that are related to their franchises and this is not the first time this has happened by the way back in 2021 you can see a reddit post from back then that reads silenthill.com website is up and alive it's getting near and uh, it's another troll page none of this comes as much of a surprise though it's not as if konami has really shown signs recently that they give two shits about the treasure trove of ips under their umbrella i mean they recently disrespected castlevania by celebrating its 35th anniversary by auctioning off NFTs and making hundreds of thousands of dollars that way. And beyond that, Konami has explicitly said that more NFTs are coming. They defended NFTs, saying that they're needed for art, 
preservation. What complete BS. And we can't forget about the desecration of beloved Konami franchises through game releases like Contra Row Core. You can see the scores right here for yourself, how awful they are. Same with Metal Gear Survive. You can see not much fanfare there. And Game of the Century eFootball, of course, with uh, some of the low scores Konami has seen. And endeavors like this mobile Castlevania game didn't do so hot with it being scrapped at one point. It did eventually return to Apple Arcade, but it's not a game that's really resonating with many people. Konami has as good as abandoned their franchises, their integrity, their love for what these franchises represent and their community for that matter. So. It should come as no surprise that they can't even be bothered to remember to renew the domains for franchises that they don't give too much shits about beyond, you know, using them for pachinkos or monetizable products instead of making something that fans of those series would genuinely love. To close off the video, I'd like to talk about Gabe Newell and the Steam Deck, which launched fairly recently and is slowly rolling out and shipping to customers. But for some lucky few, they are getting their Steam Deck hand-delivered by Gabe Newell himself. Those who are on the Steam Deck subreddit may recall seeing this post from a user who posted Gabe Newell going around the Seattle area hand-delivering the Steam Deck, which garnered almost 12,000 upvotes and there's actual images from security cameras showing Gabe Newell uh, hand delivering the Steam Deck and there's actually now a video up on Valve's official YouTube channel showing Gabe Newell doing this and it's a really wholesome thing it really shows that Gabe Newell who is you know the big boss of Valve and Steam it shows that he cares and that he's really passionate about this product and no other like CEO executive like does stuff like this. Gabe Newell is just a, a unique brand of um, a game company leader in the games industry. And this is the video in question. It, it's pretty wholesome. Let's check it out. I just kind of want to react along the way. So I emailed them. Hey, we are reaching out to a few folks that we have listed as Steam Deck reservation holders in the first batch who happen to live near Valve. Since we'll need someone home to sign for it, we're reaching out to see if it works, and if so, please confirm address for delivery. One guy said, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully people won't get oh, mad that I'm signing them. Who would be I think mad? it's gonna be weird. Like, if I were at home and I was getting a delivery from Amazon, and people with cameras get out of a truck, I'm going to be like, I've got your Steam Deck. <laughs> I guess not everyone knows who Gabe Newell is. Hi. Oh, my God. Are you, yeah. hello? Are you Hayden? Yes. Hi, Hayden. I'm Gabe. Oh, my God. Hello. So we got some of the decks early. And so we decided this is a big milestone for us to finally have these in hand and be able to give them to people. So I'm super excited to give you your deck. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, my. Ah. <laughs> I signed oh it. I hope that's okay. That's so cool. This is... My email is valvesoftware.com. I'd love to hear what you think after you've had a chance to play with it. Absolutely. I'll let you know. Great. Wow. Have Thank fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Gabe just made this guy's entire month. Hi. Hi. Are you Danny? I am. I can <laughs> see that you are Gabe Newell. Here's your deck. Wow. I love how they kept some of the... <laughs> I was not expecting to see you. <laughs> More awkward encounters Hi, in here as cool. well. I'm just wandering around your neighborhood. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, is Ming home? He's, uh, he's out skiing today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oof. Imagine Gabe Newell showing up at your front door, but you happen to be... With the, what's with the camera crew? <laughs> <laughs> you happen to be out that one day. Oof. Hi, are you Rip. Audrey? Yeah. At least it's on video. Hi, Audrey. I'm Gabe Newell. I work at Bell. Yeah. And we're delivering your deck. All right. Great. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. Wow, that's the most chill oh, response to... No, it's... Right, thank you. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> so the first job I ever had was delivering newspapers. Just the most... The next job I had was delivering like, telegrams. Like, non-reaction reaction to Gabe Newell showing up. Me, bringing me back to my days as a Western Union telegram <laughs> delivery boy. <laughs> so for us, this is a really important moment where Deck stops being a theoretical product. I just want to see what people are actually playing on yeah, Steam Deck, yeah. right? So we're finally getting around to what we do best, which is interacting with our customers and improving the experience. This is kind of symbolically an opportunity for us to go and do that. What do you play in Final Fantasy? What's your main? Uh, Dragoon. Dragoon? DPS. 
Yeah, but I have a paladin in case I need to get to the queues and yeah. uh, get my tombs the weekly, so. Yeah, I'm playing, trying to level up my white mage right now. I saw, I saw, so. Wow, this feels really great. <laughs> Thing you guys moving? about Gabe yeah. is that. Moving out. You want one? Thank you. Oh, oh wow, so cool. look at that. He's Thank just giving you. them away. I don't know if He's not just like a businessman who is in a position yeah, well, of leadership. He's also an actual Gabe game developer and a gamer who's passionate about games, who is in that position. I'd love to hear what you like, what you don't like, how can make it better. And he like is open to feedback, like literally direct communication. No offense, but until I worked here, I thought, yeah, okay. Like, Gabe doesn't read his emails. But you do read your emails. Yeah, you know, I get anywhere from several hundred to several thousand emails a day. I read them all. Really? And that sort of keeps you super grounded, right? You, you know what people are actually thinking, what's actually important to them. Now, if they email you and they say, I don't know, deck is great, but the delivery guy sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fire the delivery guy. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know of any other person in that kind of position, you know, leadership position of a major company like this to go out and like hand deliver these devices and, um, you know, just like genuinely show pride and, and um, really highlight this momentous moment and, and make some people's days for others. They just don't know Gabe Newell or aren't seeped into the culture enough where they're going to have this big reaction of, oh my God, it's Gabe Newell. But yeah, it just goes a long way when the big boss of a product or whatnot like actually cares about the product and he shows it and goes out of his way to do stuff like this, which he doesn't need to do, but does it anyway just to, you know, just to experience you know, seeing people getting this device that so many people have been waiting for and uh, that no doubt Gabe Newell and the entire Steam and Valve team are excited about. So, yeah, I don't know, just stuff like this is refreshing to see amidst, you know, uh, the the flood of, of bad news, the flood of scummy executives doing scummy things. It's good to see somebody who's actually grounded and humble and uh, is genuinely passionate about you know the medium itself and not just the monetization potential of the medium i hope the steam deck really takes off i'm getting mine sometime soon i hope but uh, i've heard nothing but good things the software the os i hear it needs a lot of refinement but updates are coming out every day and uh, for a 1.0 product that valve has launched i hear nothing but good things especially about how this thing runs games in a portable form factor so yeah exciting times indeed there you have it folks this is one man's take on the latest game news let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on battlefield 2042's continuously diminishing player base that's now even lower than battlefield 4 what your thoughts are on konami getting trolled by people who managed to accrue the silenthill.com domain and what you think about Gabe Newell's approach to hand delivering some of the Steam Decks to some of the first Steam Deck customers. Share your thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.